guys I hope you're having a good day uh, this video is very all over the place and I do apologize for that just like this horrendous dirty desk <laughs> every time I glaze at the end of the project I forget to clean up and oh I need to clean up as I go anyway um, this is an interesting video because this is just me discussing the things I'm going to do in ceramics for Halloween and I'm so excited. I do hope you enjoy this video and leave a comment below if you're interested in seeing more. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. This is the microphone on Everything's on. Okay. I think I want to focus on these things today. So I want to make a pumpkin with a witch's hat and then I wanted some jewels and gems to hang from the hat. I thought that would be kind of cool. Uh, the second thing is ghost mugs. I want to make four of those. I'm trying to pace myself so that everything I make will like make sense. You know what I mean? So when I know I don't have like a lot of time so it's like I'm trying to make what I want to make and trying to make enough. For everyone but also try not to stress out because of the baby or my toddler because he wants me like all the time so I'm just trying to make sure that I have the pieces that I want to make and what's within me that I want to come out but also have enough of them so enough people can get some mugs because I know that people always want mugs and they sell out so fast <coughs> so it's kind of stressful, but hopefully, I don't know, I feel like I'm getting into a better rhythm and I'm trying to make multiples of things so that people could have some mugs. Anyway, so the next one is um, cauldron. For some reason, everyone's talking about cauldron. I think they're cool. My mom actually had found a cauldron from like months ago we used to have and she put it by our pond or my parents pond and so I was like okay so maybe there's this cauldron thing going on but I wanted to make four of them I think I wanted two with um, fire which is cool it's like I want this base to have these like I guess I kind of want this it's like this base like this and it has these like little gemstones on there I know I'm just drawing really fast and then I want the cauldron to sit like this, like this, with the things on top of the gemstones. So it's kind of like the gemstones is the um, saucer. The gemstone fire thing is the saucer and then the cauldron's on top. And so we'll see how that works. And then one with a cat because someone tagged me on TikTok. Okay, so the TikTok basically was about this girl who had an idea of a mug and she said a cat would be sitting like this like peeking over in the mug so it's like this little kitty cat and it's peeking over the mug and the tail is like this and the body is the handle and so I thought that was a really cool thing but I don't know because there's fire right there I don't know if I should do the one with fire or I don't know mm, let's see that's like a burnt cat it's like PETA anyway and then like I had this idea with the facet cut mugs I made last month um, of doing like a moon handle with a gemstone hanging from the handle. I thought that'd be kind of cool, right? And then maybe some designs on the moon, I don't know. And then on here, um, there'll be a witch's hat on one thing, and then a pumpkin, and then some other representation, probably candy corn or something, some other representation of. Halloween. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope this works. We'll see. Um, so follow along. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully I can do all of these today. These are the heavy ones, the ones that require a lot of work. And I know that we have plans to hang out with friends today. So I don't know how much I can get done, but I'm hoping that I can get most of the things done that require like two steps. I'm going to have to use my um, uh, stop power meter caliber. I use my handy dandy dirty caliber to measure the, the hats and stuff 
stuff like that, the whip of the hats. Um, so you guys get to see that. Um, but yeah, I hope to like show you guys the different process and the different steps of me making things. And we'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and get started on this Halloween project. guys just thought I'd jump in here and just talk to you guys a little bit about my um, throwing so I felt like this was a decent throwing day for me um, and I don't know like I love to throw and I love centering and this is the first um, if you don't really know about ceramics this is the first process it's called centering and so you're just trying to get the clay in the center of the wheel so that you can control it and create whatever shape you would like um, the next step <laughs> I did that really fast that was fast centering and it, it seems like it's a little bit off but anyway but the next step is opening which is what I'm doing now you just open the clay and you're compressing as you open as I'm doing to the bottom you're just trying to make it nice and smooth and clean and I add water so that it's lubricated so that I can now do the next part which is throwing um, you just throw the piece. It's like you compress the clay with both hands so the piece has nothing to do but go up. I was trying to film as I was doing this. Um, anyway, so when you compress the clay, the, the piece has nothing to do but um, go up. And as you're doing that, it's really interesting how the clay just kind of pushes against you and it it pushes against your hands, both hands at the same time. Does that make sense? And it's just going up vertically. I think it's kind of cool. Okay, the reason why I was pushing on the rim like this is because I wanted to make that cauldron look and I ended up um, trimming a lot of it off because it was a little lopsided. I should have um, pulled, I don't know how to explain it. I guess I should have like took that rim and um, I should have been spinning the wheel faster but also I should have taken, I should have taken, it's not a real word. I should have taken the rim and kind of like looped it under a bit more instead of like forcing it because I don't know if you can tell but the, it's a little bit off center and also it's a little bit off center because I didn't center as well as I should have. Um, I made another cauldron mug and I was a bit more patient with that one. I think I'm just so like oh my gosh I have to finish my work before the baby gets upset and blah 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 and it's like I just need to relax you know it's gonna be fine the baby's fine you know um, but you can tell there's a little wobble but it's okay
So this next piece is pretty fun. I'm making an enclosed piece and it's really, really, really exciting because it's a ghost mug. I was going to make a teenage ghost mug like I did last year, meaning it was supposed to be a ghost mug with sunglasses and a chain. So it was called two chains. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, um, I was going to make that, but then I was like, I just kind of want a simple mug. And it is like a smaller mug, like the ghost mug of this, well, this type of ghost mug is a smaller mug than the next ghost mug I made. Oh, okay, pay attention to the wheel right there. You see how it's a bit more centered than the last one? And that is why when I made this piece, it turned out really well. I felt like it turned out better. Um, meaning not like turn out better meaning like at the end but more so like when I was trimming and everything so I think one piece of advice I have with um, throwing is that just take your time when you're centering because that centering will basically put you at a point where everything else will work and if you don't take your time to center everything else will be off the walls of the clay will once I would be smaller than the other so you just want to like take your time and just focus so like when I was in college I um, had some moments where I was having a hard time centering and one of the things that my professor had me do was just center like wedge and center that's basically what I did and so I would wedge and center wedge and center and then until the clay got um, too wet to re-wedge it, um, we had a reclaim bucket. And so I just throw it in a reclaim bucket and then get another piece of clay and wedge and center, wedge and center. And that just taught you how to get familiar with your hands, get familiar with the clay body, um, become familiar with the way that you brace your, your um, there's a trick you can brace your, your, um, <laughs> your elbows on your knees so that the centering could be a bit like they you can control the clay instead of the clay controlling you basically um, I don't know what I was trying to say um, so if you were to see this right now you do see it's a little bit off but it's fine um, I correct myself later um, but the cool thing is that I felt like this mug was really good in terms of um, I don't know it just felt like a bit more better oh also I didn't film the second ghost mug that I made well the second enclosed form that I made but that one was really good you guys it was like one of the best enclosed forms I've ever made and I didn't film it ah. and I, I don't think I did because like when I'm filming it's like my brain it's like oh gosh don't scratch your butt don't <laughs> Make sure you're like focusing on what you're doing, you know, and um, I'm a bit more nervous and I'm like, oh, it's just so much happening. But when I'm not filming, I can focus on what I'm doing and it's a way better product. I feel like in terms of like the throwing aspect, I feel like once I start getting into the decoration and stuff, I get so wrapped up in it. Like I totally forget to film like. You'll see at the end of this video, I forgot to film over all the decorating that I did. And I was just so annoyed because I was like, gosh, Tiffany, that's like the easiest part because when you're, when I'm like working in clay, when I'm decorating, I was like, I'm not even thinking. But for some reason when I'm throwing and I'm trying to film and throw, it's like, I'm like thinking like, oh, did the camera go off? Is the camera dead? Like, did I charge the battery? It's like all these things are running through my brain. But when I'm decorating or when I'm adding pieces onto clay or when I'm carving, it's like my brain is just like on autopilot or something. I don't know. Also, I was listening to this audiobook that I didn't realize that was like very heated. Like there was like all these like all the stuff in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this book, like kidnapping and all sorts of stuff and I I don't listen to the stuff like that because I just get, get so wrapped up in stuff and that it was just too much for me you guys so oh anyway if you have any good audio suggestions just let me know anyway it's totally off track I I really feel like I my brain just goes like 50 million miles per minute anyway this is me enclosing the form <laughs> 
basically you just collar the form in as I was doing while I was yakking off, but you collar the clay, um, I guess you kind of choke the clay to like form the go into itself and then you just kind of taper it off. And I think right now I'm looking for, yeah, there we go, the, um, the clay tool the scraper clay tool to kind of clean up the lines and to clean up the finger, um, the indentions for my fingerprints. And yeah, so <laughs> this is me. Where is the cutting tool? Where is the cutting tool? I'm surprised my socks match actually. That's pretty exciting. So anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much it with the, with the enclosed forms. And um, I hope you like this video, or at least I hope you like seeing the different forms that I made. Just let me know if you want to see more forms. Like I can do videos where I actually like talk as I'm making and slow down my throwing process so you can see how I throw. Just let me know. And this final form that I'm making right now is actually a, um, a facet cut form. So I found this tool from a clay shop that I go to all the time in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I usually get my clay. Um, I'm using a frost clay. It does feel like thrown with cream cheese. <laughs> it's, a, um, it's a beautiful clay body and it's porcelain. And so I'm just like trying to eyeball it. I know some people that actually measure out their um, facet cuts so that they're equal, but I, I don't really do that. I, I think I would just prefer for it to be a bit more organic. Um, so basically I'm just cutting out the facets and then making sure they're just somewhat lined up.
Okay, so now I'm just cleaning up the facets very carefully. <laughs> Sometimes I like leave the marks on them, but I just felt like cleaning them up this time. And then also, I didn't really know, or I really still don't know, what I wanted to add to the facets. I'm, I was talking to Simon about it, and he said bats, like these bats that are like flying through the air at night. And um, as you'll see, I'm, go I'm going to make a really interesting handle that's a moon shape, which would be kind of cool. Um, so it's kind of like bats flying towards the moon, but then the moon is going to be on the right hand side and I don't want bats flying towards the moon because then it'll be like um, heavy, you know what I mean? Like one sided, like heavy to one side. Um, does that make sense? Anyway, and I guess I'm just stuck, I'm just so stuck in this whole like rule of thirds. So. Um, or at least that's kind of like what we were taught in school. So basically with the rule of thirds, it's kind of like um, you want three different objects or three different, three colors, three objects or whatever, and it balances out a piece. Um, some people don't really follow the rule of thirds and their work looks fantastic, but I, I just have like this, or even opposites. I feel like it's more opposites than the rule of thirds, but Anyway, <laughs> part of me just felt kind of like, well, what do I do? Do I just, um, do I just, um, put the bats flying towards the moon or do I put them flying away from the moon? And it kind of, I feel like it would look better if the bats are flying away from the moon. I don't know. If you <laughs> have a suggestion, let me know. So now I'm just, uh, pitching this piece of clay making it look kind of like a, um, a pitch pot. But the cool thing about this, this is really cool. So the cool thing about this is that um, it's another technique I learned in school, but you can create forms that have air pockets in them. And because the air is stuck in them, um, after you pitch them and you close it up, you can like manipulate, manipulate the like the whole piece and it'll be like this little bubble. It's really cool. As you can see, this is um, this is me closing the piece. And then like, I can just do all sorts of cool things with it. I can bend it and sculpt it and different things like that. Um, and I kind of took a little while to like figure out how big the moon should be. And even after this, I think um, maybe two days after this, because I covered everything with plastic so that it could stay um, wet so that it could dry slowly. Um, I was still manipulating the moon trying to figure out how I wanted it to look. But it is a fun way to make pieces and I I want to say that I may have... No, I don't even think I did this before. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've done this before. But it's really neat. And I went and I've already poked a hole in the moon. I've already attached it and poked a hole in the moon so that it doesn't blow up because you don't want air pockets. But also I put a little um, hook in there so that I can have a little charm hanging from the moon. Isn't that the sweetest thing? I thought it'd be cute if it's like a little tiny star. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, talking like that. Anyway, so yeah.
the battery is dying. Let me show you what I made. So these are little cauldrons and then they're sitting on these logs, which is really cool. And so I made two of them and then this witch's hat. And then it sits on top of this pumpkin, which is really cool. And then there's gonna be these little these little like <laughs> things. Like I don't know what to call them. I guess these little charms, charms, that are going to be hanging from the witch's hat, which would be so fun. And then these two little ghosts. This ghost has a flower crown. You can't hardly see it because it's so dark. But this ghost, it's so dark in here. This ghost has a flower crown and then this one's kind of plain. Um, I still have to clean up the edges and stuff, but oh, it's so fun. Okay, so right now I have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and I was supposed to trim stuff, but I didn't get a chance to trim. So I have one more mug left that I'm supposed to trim that I haven't trimmed. And one cool thing is that I got to, um, <laughs> I have this clip in my hair, but I got to um, wash and twist my dreadlocks, which is, or my locks, which is really cool. Um, so, and I did that last night, so that was wonderful because I haven't had a chance to do it. Vlogging is weird. So anyway, that's it for now. I hope you guys have a good week and I'll talk to you soon and show you guys what else I'm going to make for Halloween. I'm so excited. Bye.